Hi everyone, welcome back to The Mystic in the Woods. I'm Kate and today we are doing our next installment in the Shadow Work and Tarot series, talking all about feminine wounding with the Empress card. Now, of course, when I say feminine wounding, I'm using that as an umbrella term. There are so many things that can fall underneath that, right? We have the mother wound, which we already talked about with the queens. We have the witch wound, which I'll be talking about in upcoming videos. We have things like people pleasing and lack of boundaries. These types of archetypal wounds that we have deemed as feminine. Now, one of the wounds that I like to talk about a lot and I associate very heavily with the Empress is one that I call the Eve wound. Now, this is an archetypal wound stemming from the Garden of Eden story and the way that it has been told and the traditions that have popped up around it and how it continues to impact women today. The Garden of Eden story absolutely has direct consequences for today's society. We still you know, it's it's one of those stories that everybody knows and it has its claws like so deep into the collective unconscious that it can be really hard to like rip all those roots up unless you're actively looking for it. Now, of course, the traditional story, not what the scripture actually says, but the traditional story, right, is that God creates man, a man needs a helper, so he takes man's rib and creates woman to be his helper, and Eve is tricked by the snake and she manipulates Adam, and it's her fault that they get kicked out of the Garden of Eden, right? Because she was so easily tricked, she's punished to be below Adam forever, um, pain during childbirth, she is the reason that sin, death, and destruction come into the world, right? It's her fault that even Jesus had to die. That's what the story tells us. And because that story, like I said, has its roots and claws so deep into the collective unconscious, it has created so many of the wounds and systems that we see today, directly causing things like people pleasing, lack of boundaries, feeling like it's our responsibility to manage the emotions of everybody around us, and that it's our fault if they're unhappy. This story really has a death grip on the feminine unconscious and really the masculine unconscious as well. But today we're talking about the feminine, the feminine aspect of it. Now, we're talking about the Empress card in relation to this wound. This wound that weaves its way through the witch wound and through the mother wound and through all these other archetypal wounds because it tells us that femininity is innately deviant and innately less. So anything that we have been conditioned to perceive as feminine is generally also conditioned to be perceived as less. Things like intuition, things like emotion, things, all of these things, right? Now, the problem with the Garden of Eden story and the way that it has been told and the way that it has a grip on the collective unconscious is that it also tells us that because Eve was the first woman, we are what she was. So if she had emotions that could not be trusted, if she had a body that could not be trusted, then neither can we. We also cannot trust our emotions. We also cannot trust our bodies, these kinds of things. The Empress card is one that is so tied to the earthly aspect of femininity, right? So we have the high priestess card as like the um, intuitive, in touch with the divine aspect of the feminine. And then we have the empress, which is the very earthly worldly aspect of the empress. The one that governs the body and emotions and fertility and sex and all of these different things are things we're gonna find inside of the empress card. I think that this card can be quite almost triggering for people, but definitely have that resistance around because we have also been conditioned that the way that all of those things are okay is through motherhood. So it's okay to be emotional. It's okay to, to have sex and to do all these things if the goal is to be a mother. So we're always asking for different depictions of the Empress that don't revolve around pregnancy. This is my favorite. This is from the Nameless One Tarot and Oracle. And we still have all the symbolism of fertility, but we also have the snake and the dagger. And we're really speaking here to the two aspects of the feminine. The feminine that is nurturing and fertile and can be the mother and all the caretaker and all the things. And also the aspect of the mother 
that is Kalima, that can come in and rip things down, that understands sometimes a forest fire is required for new life to grow. So we get to see both aspects in a card like this. This is the Empress from the uh, Darkness of Light Tarot. And here again, we have a very feminine figure. She's playing the harp. We've got like a bird and she's in the garden and all the things. Sorry, I just, <laughs> I was looking at there for a second and kind of all the things, right? So this is the Empress in this deck. And we are really looking at these very feminine figures associated with all things feminine, right? So how does this have to do, what does this have to do with shadow work? Now, learning to embrace both the dark feminine, so think like Lilith and Kali and all these figures, as well as the light feminine, is something that most of us have to grapple with in our shadow work at some point. So what I see tend to happen is we lean into figures like Lilith, who I love, and Kali, who I love, and all these other dark feminine beings, and Nana, etc. And we really start to embrace that dark feminine quality, and that is beautiful and great and important. But we also have to reclaim that light feminine quality, that it's okay to be emotional. It's okay to trust our emotions, to trust our body. All of these things, that stereotypical woman who kind of flits from thing to thing, following her emotions with no logical path, this isn't necessarily less. So when the Empress card comes up, in for, comes up in a shadow work reading for me, if it comes up in the position of, you know, what shadow work piece, um, you know, what shadow aspect do I need to look at at this time, that type of thing, and the Empress comes up, I'm really looking at people pleasing. I'm looking at where do I have trouble receiving support? Where do I have trouble receiving pleasure? Where am I viewing my feminine or my client's feminine traits as less? How am I viewing emotions? How am I viewing the feminine body? Where am I still struggling to accept an aspect of the feminine as good, as equal, as powerful? Where am I still struggling to accept that? Where am I taking on other people's emotions as my own? Where am I managing their emotions? Where am I letting myself feel responsibility for things that are not in fact my responsibility? Now, if you want a shadow work spread, I of course have my shadow work and tarot PDF. That link is below. I have a plug and play spread. There's a whole bunch of different prompts that you can plug and play in there to make a shadow work spread that really works for you in your situation. But in that spread, we have positions like what shadow work aspect am I looking at? We have positions like what is the root of it or where did this begin? And if the Empress card shows up in one of those positions, I'm probably gonna be looking at how was femininity modeled for me when I was a child? How did I see the women in my life model things like healthy boundaries? How did I see them care for others or not care for others? How did I see them express their emotions or not express their emotions? right? If I'm looking at the Empress card as a what do I need to embrace or how can I move forward, I'm really looking at embracing those moments and embracing my creative, my creative flow, my fertility, my sexuality, my emotions. One of these things, and of course fertility doesn't have to be like actually having a baby, right? Like fertility and creativity are about all kinds of things, not just creating like a human life. Now, I think that the Empress is a really powerful teacher for this because she can show us that she's, first of all, she's the Empress, okay? So she is a, a figure of power. She's sitting on a throne. We've got different goddess symbols here. Like this is not a pushover of a woman. This is not a posi this is not a woman in a position that lacks power and authority, right? Her counterpart would be the Emperor. We can look at them as a pair. <clears throat> she isn't less or weak. She is just the earthly feminine. So I think she can be a really, really powerful teacher for this. The Eve wound runs so deep in so many of us. And if I was going to like choose, you know, I would actually put Eve in this card. I think that she's the perfect archetypal character of this card 
because while we have all been taught to view her as weak, as manipulative, as easily tricked, as these types of things, like we all want to move so far from that Eve, we want to move as far from Eve as possible, right? Like we all see the, the memes, like why be Eve when you can be Lilith, okay? But it's not Eve or Lilith. It's not the Empress or the High Priestess. It's not the Light Feminine or the Dark Feminine. It's actually about both. And when we look at the original scriptures, when we work with Eve, we actually learn that this is about shame. This is about dissolving the shame that we have been taught to carry as women. And we also learn as we study what those scriptures were supposed to say in their original languages and we work again with Eve, we learn that this was not a woman that was tricked. The snake isn't an evil figure. We all know that the snake is a symbol of the feminine. It's a symbol of the goddess, as is the tree, as is the garden. Eve made an empowered choice when she ate that apple or she ate that fruit. We can generally also see it as a pomegranate, right? Which is all over the symbolism of the empress. She made an empowered decision when she ate that fruit. It can also be a story of human enlightenment human empowerment and we can view the leaving the you know the we can view humanity leaving the garden as a punishment from god as we've been ta taught to believe or we can view it as a humanity coming of age story right when she ate that fruit she chose wisdom but wisdom doesn't come without the hard stuff too so when eve made that decision she made a decision she wasn't tricked she was following her emotions. She was trusting her body. She was trusting her own inner wisdom. And that is not less. The Empress is not less than the Emperor. She isn't, she isn't something to avoid. She's something to understand. And so when she comes up in a reading, there's really a lot there that we can look at. We can look at the mother wound and we can look at separation from our own mothers. We can look at the separation from the goddess, which is also just littered in the Garden of Eden story. But there's so much that we can look at with the Empress card that it really has become one of my favorite cards um, for helping us to find where am I still carrying shame? Where am I still carrying responsibility that is not mine? Where am I still carrying fear around these feminine aspects? And how can I begin to integrate them and or let them go, depending on what it is that I'm looking at? So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you'd like me to expand on this, do a part two, whatever, let me know. Again, if you are interested in that Reclaiming Eve program, we start on March 3rd. Today is the 28th. There's one spot left. This is the first time the program's running, so this is the lowest I will ever offer it at cost-wise. But the link is down below. You can email me or reach out on Instagram if you have any questions about it. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.